I'd like to call to order this November the 17th meeting of the Columbus Municipal School Board. At this time, I'd like to call forward Ms. Uh, Elder Brenda McCaskill, pastor of the St. James United Methodist Church from Columbus, to provide the invocation. Good evening. Good evening. Giving honor to all of you, our father's children, to our superintendent, Dr. Hickman, and all the other board members, to all our parents, our teachers, our principals, and just friends who's come out to share with us tonight. Let us pray. Oh Lord, how magnificent is your name in all of the earth. We come before you tonight to evoke your presence, almighty God that you continue just to lead us and to guide us and the decisions that we must make, knowing that we can't do anything on our own, but we are depending on a higher power greater than ourselves. Lead us, guide us. In the midst of the troubles within our homes, the troubles in our schools, the troubles within our communities, the corrupt trouble within our nation, and the trouble in our world knowing that there is nothing that's too hard for you. And tonight, O oh Lord, we stand on the promise that you've already given us, that you have a plan for us to do good, to work good for our welfare and not to do evil. Come within our midst tonight to stay with us and just linger there as we go forth within this meeting. And we ask that you forgive us for some time we're short-sighted, some time we missed a point, but yet and still we have good intentions to do good for the hope that lies through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Forgive us for our sins and shortcomings against you. It's in the name of the Almighty we come before you tonight, and it is by your grace we pray. And amen. 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 Thank you, Elder McCaskill. At this time, we'd have our Pledge of Allegiance to be led by Nishan Beckham Beckwith, who's in the fourth grade at Franklin Academy. Nishan. Attention. Salute, pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of one nation, America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good. Thank you very much, Nishan. At this time, we do have a quorum present tonight, um, so the board is um, open to conduct business. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the open forum. Uh, we have one citizen who has signed up, Mr. Barry Hines. Good evening, trustees, Dr. Hickman, Mr. Hemphill. Um, I appreciate the opportunity tonight. Preparing to speak to the group tonight, it was a great pleasure to see that my main concern seemed to have been allevi alleviated when I found the agenda packet online. Uh, when I saw the announcement in the packet from the, the board president, it gave me great concern that that was going to be removed. Uh, and I hope that is going to be the case in the future. Is that correct? It will be online? We will provide information online after the agenda is complete. Um, and finalize for the award. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, as you know, no agenda is complete. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I did notice one thing in the back of the room when I walked in. I did not see the open forum sign-up sheet. Is that going to be discontinued? We're operating in accordance to our policy, Mr. Hines. The question was, is the open forum sheet in the back going to be discontinued? So we're going to adhere to our policy, which states that any citizen who would like to speak to the board or come before the board would have to do so in, in writing. They would have to submit that in writing. That has not been your policy for over a year. 
I uh, learned when I got into management and working groups, I don't care what the contract says, once you set precedent, you now put yourself in particular, particular limbo with the people you're dealing with because you've now established a, a method and a criteria to go outside of your policy. I believe it's in many of your best interest and the best interest of the citizens who wish to come to talk with you to keep you open forum. As you well know, it has not been abused. I know in the, in the period that I've been attending, it has not been abused. It has been well used by this Board of Trustees. And I would like to know at which board meeting and where I can find in the minutes, this board acted as the board to discontinue the open forum sign-up sheet, please. We'll have to provide that information to Mr. Hines at a, at a later date. We'll get that information to you. Okay, I'd like if to that know. information uh, is there, we'll provide it to you. Thank you. You're welcome. I have another concern um, I have to do with special meetings. Is I sat through a very tedious meeting at McKellar at a special meeting called to set the agenda for the 10th and the 17th. A tedious meeting. 11.30 till 2 o'clock. Two long policy discussions taking place on two of the items that were going to be discussed uh, <clears throat> on the 10th or the 17th. Policy type discussion, which I guess is good because I got to hear it. After all that, the agenda was set. And lo and behold, on the 10th, was the first thing this board did but add another item during the meeting to the special meeting agenda. I have no idea what, it, what that emergency was, that it was put on the agenda of a special meeting rather than holding for an, the next available meeting. That, that to me is out of the spirit of the open meeting law and the provisions of the open meeting law for special meetings and special meeting notice and telling the public what the agenda is. So I really am encouraging you to stay transparent to your constituents, to your people that are supporting you. I think that they want to support you, but they want to know what you're doing, how you're doing, and they can understand better what you're doing if you have these things available. I have one last comment is uh, there have been a few, one or two instances in the last four months where the special meeting notices posted by this board have not been in strict compliance with the open meeting law. One is containing content agenda, one was backdated. Please make sure, and I only do this because I care about you and I care about this school district. Please make sure that what you're doing is within compliance. I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you for listening, and let's have a good meeting tonight. Thank you, Mr. Hines. Uh, Madam President, I just have one quick question. Yes, um, Ms. Spears. With respect to the question posed of open um, forum, now, I understand we're operating under a, a special uh, meeting policy tonight. tonight, and that's why normally we do not have, unless you request to, uh, you know, put in writing and request to appear before the board. But in our scheduled monthly meetings, then open forum sign-up sheet is still available for those who wish to come and speak and not necessarily have to come and put it in writing before uh, Thank you, Mr. Meeting. Spears, you're correct. Uh, may I make one more comment about policy, please? Mr. Mr. Hines. According to policy BCBI, which I followed to be able to speak today, the board did not live up to their side of that policy. I still have not received a letter from the superintendent instructing me on about how to go about doing this. Thought I'd mention. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Hines. Thank you, Mrs. Spears. Yes. No, I, I, I mean, I guess that was a question. Is because I mean there has not been any type of movement toward any other operation that I'm aware of. So as far as tonight, since we are operating under a, a special meeting, special meeting, right. but as far as if going forward, it will continue to be that open forum is just that. There's a sign-up sheet, and those who wish to come speak can. There hasn't been any tectonic shift in no, policy. I, don't, I mean, we haven't had uh, any vote to, right. okay. to overturn I any policy. I just want to clarify that I had not missed something. No, you haven't missed anything, okay. any policy. <laughs> that okay. we have. Okay. Right. If that's the case, Mr. Hines, they've already answered your question. Is that correct? On the, on the special meeting, he asked yes. the question for tonight. Yes, sir, he did. Okay. Right. 
Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Spears' understanding is exactly my understanding of our procedure. Thank you, Mr. Lassenheiser. At this time, we will move to adopt the agenda. This does require a motion. Uh, Madam President, I have uh, just one thing I wish to uh, have moved from under the consent agenda, and that is item C3, so that it can be discussed further. Um, according to Robert's Rules of Order, I don't have to have a, any type of motion. It can just be relocated to come right after um, we finish the consent agenda, right before we go into Section 5, I mean Section 8. You're asking for? C3. The on-grade software services agreement? Correct. To be removed from the consent agenda? That is correct. Okay, and that is your motion? It, it doesn't require a motion. Robert Rules of Order says that I can move it without any type of vote. It would just be further discussion. So you're looking to have it to be an individual item? Mm -hmm. And so we'll just move that as item number? I mean, it can stay as C3. It'll just follow just pull it out to discuss it. Section 8. All right, thank you, Mr. Spears. Is there an, a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Is there a second to Mr. Spears' motion? Second. It's been sec it has been motioned by Mr. Spears. It has been seconded by Mr. Lewis. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. All opposed? Please let the record note that the vo vote was four to one with one opposition, being Mrs. Fisher. The next item on the agenda is to approve the minutes. Uh, item number A is consideration to approve the October 8, 2014 regular school board meeting. Is there a motion? So moved. It has been motioned by Mr. Spears. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Lotzenheiser. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. It is unanimous. The next item on the agenda is consideration to approve the October 15th 2014 special school board meeting minutes. Is there a motion? So moved. It has been motioned by Mr. Spears. Is there a second? I second, that. second by Mr. Lotzenheiser. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. It is unanimous. The next item on the agenda is Office of the Superintendent, uh, Dr. Hickman. Yes, one of the things we, that um, at the beginning, we really want to recognize um, employees who have um, given their all at a level of excellence within our district. And we have uh, two employees with us um, that stand out um, head and shoulders above the rest. Um, and both of them are, are being recognized, again, for their commitment to service um, and, and at the level uh, that no one else is performing at. And so if I can ask uh, Courtney Stanback and Dennis Cookie Bailey to come forward. Thank you to Mrs. Stanback and to Cookie, a.k.a. Cook. Thank you for all you do. And again, I do want to brag on these two. I, um, you know, one of the things that I, I definitely go to the high school and the different schools and I talk to uh, students. And the students also, um, without hesitation, uh, always discuss these two individuals. And I think that's, that's really where it matters. I, I think we can create smoke screens for adults, but the kids, they'll tell the truth. Um, at the end of the day. And so once again, I do want to thank you um, as superintendent uh, for what you guys do uh, in your continual service. All right, up next, um, do I move to the next? Mm -hmm. 
when we talk about the curriculum updates, we actually um, we have information out, but we haven't received the responses yet as far as uh, the textbook companies uh, in order to, to really look at um, where we're at in the order and the contracts and those kind of things. So um, we don't have a, a, a current update except that they're, you know, we're, we're still waiting on a response. And the next is a, a demonstration uh, from uh, McKellar with our robotics equipment. Although we did have uh, some difficulty with the equipment, we still uh, would like Mr. Thompson to come up and, and, and discuss. Dr. Hickman, how are you tonight, sir? I'm doing pretty well. Uh, it is good to stand here before you and the dishonored board and, and tell you about the exciting things that are fixing to happen at McKellar uh, Career Technical Center for your students. Uh, that is a culmination of the most modern technology uh, in 38 schools in the state of Mississippi is being implemented at, at McKellar this year, thanks to the leadership of uh, Ms. Adams and Mr. Bray uh, in seeking this grant through the State Department of Education for $200,000 to get this equipment. I do apologize for not having that equipment here, but you'll find in front of each one of you a little piece of glass that has your initials on it. Uh, that was done with a laser engraver uh, yesterday afternoon through Microsoft Works uh, that uh, just took a piece of glass that I got at uh, Michael's uh, gift shops and laid in there, put your initials in it, and it engraved it on those uh, little pieces of glass. That's just some of the technology that's going to be available. I observed a teacher today in a fellow district uh, that was taking a 18 by 30 piece of uh, material and laying it in this engraver a laser engraver, taking a picture and, engra and downloading it onto that and, and carving that image in the material of that picture. So that's just some of the technology that's going to be available to your students. This other little item here is, is developed with a three-dimensional printer, a 3D modeling. Uh, this system, uh, you have about five of these little printers that's going to be in the program, three of the smaller caliber, and then two or larger ones that's going to print bigger material for your bigger projects. Uh, this is actually, it's just like if you can imagine being at uh, Dairy Queen, when they go back there to get an ice cream cone, you pull the lever and the ice cream comes out, mm -hmm. and they just move the cone down and it squiggles. That's exactly what does this right here does. It, it takes a, a, a plastic element, runs it through a heating extruder, and develops this right here. It comes in a rack. You pull that off and that automatically turns. So that is, that is high technology that's going to be available right here at, uh, in, in McKellar. This program started in 1986 and the State Department of Education put in what's called diversified technology. And it started out with the six principles of physics and that's work, force, rate, resistance, power, and energy. And those six same principles are in effect today at a higher level with robotics, hydraulics, pneumatics, electronics, uh, laser engravers, computer integrated manufacturing, and all of this equipment is going to be available at McKellar. It's there now, it just haven't, hasn't been put together and will be. And would like to invite the school board and all the community when we get that set up and, and in operation to come there and, and, and view it and see what exciting things are going to happen for the students of uh, Columbus and, and the school district here. I'm going tomorrow to Itawamba Community College for a VEX robotics competition. There will be 28 teams in Mississippi and Tennessee competing with the little robots that are going to run around on the floor that the students will design and build. And that takes them and teaches them the physics concept. Mm -hmm. It teaches them the science, the uh, mathematics. Uh, they don't understand, realize they're doing physics, but that's what they're really doing when they're using these programs. So I'm proud to have this program at McKellar. Uh, we're proud, my, my company, McGee Enterprises, has been very instrumental in putting these programs in the state of Mississippi, and we're extremely excited to have it at McKellar, and look forward to coming back and visiting with you and letting you see this equipment in, in operation. Thank you for the opportunity to come tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'd just like to comment that, you know, um, we, we're real proud of the opportunity that you're helping us provide for our students uh, to be able to give our students a, a, a better outlook uh, in preparation for the future. 
Uh, one of the things that you know I was reading about the the 3D printers and, and my son was telling me about is that they're they actually are about to have their first uh, 3D printer car mm -hmm. that was developed from a, a 3D printer. And so, like you said, this technology is, is, is cutting edge, and right now it's at the fingertips for all of our students to be able to have the opportunity. So once again, thank you, and thank you, Janet Adams. The next item on our agenda is the consent agenda items. We do know that we are considering all of the consent agenda items with the exception of item number three consideration to approve on-grade software services agreement. Uh, this will require a motion. Is there a motion? Okay. It has been motioned by Mr. Lottenheiser. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Spears. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. It is unanimous. The next item we will consider is item number three, consideration to approve on-grade software services agreement. This will require an action. Is there a motion to approve? So it has been motioned by Mrs. Fisher. Is there a second? Second. It has been seconded by Mr. Lewis. Any discussion? Yes. Um, the question that I have uh, that I had posed before uh, with respect to this particular program is, and I, it was my understanding that we were going to get information to evaluate the program and the cost a little bit more than just what has been put for, you know, before us. And I know uh, Ms. Tippett is here tonight, so, you know, in lieu of having the information to actually, you know, review, could you kind of speak to what the program is, how it will actually, you know, help the district? Because, I mean, it's a pretty hefty fee of 60 plus thousand dollars. Right. For each year. There are actually three modules that, that we're looking at. Uh, the first one is teach. It's a single sign-on. So students can go to a portal and they, they click whatever. Uh, if they need to go do map testing, they click that and it takes them into that. They, if they need to um, do LS assessments, they click that. And it, based on their student ID, it, it does a, a seamless integration with those things so that makes it a little bit easier for students to, to get to those, those things and allows them to do some collaboration also. Um, the second module is improve. In the improve module, they load up all of our assessment data from whatever source, state testing, um, map assessments, um, some of the things that are going on in McGraw-Hill, uh, ELS, and can compare a student's progress over all of those modules. So if there's, if, there's, if there's one that we have that students are, are um, scoring, all students are scoring high on and, and it's different from the others, we can, we can figure that out and then maybe not continue to use that. Um, and the third module is assess. That will allow teachers to develop their own, their assessments for students and it goes into that whole thing too. So we're, we're looking at how a teacher is assessing students as well as all of the other tools that we have. And it presents it in the dashboard for administrators here, for billing administrators, as well as for teachers so that they can look at their students' progress using all of those different things. Okay, and, and just to understand is that, I mean, this would be a program or platform that's utilized from 12th grade all the way down to uh, bottom line elementary school and so it doesn't matter uh, it's not captive to just what McGraw Hills oh, no, subject it's matter not. is I mean it would be universal and capture all data from all platforms regardless exactly. of what vendor is coming e from mm -hmm. including state assessments okay so really Miss Tipper in a really simple way this is like a one-stop shop to understand how students are progressing and you can see and compare and, and triangulate data on student performance. Precisely, from here all the way to the teacher level. They need to be able to see those things too. All right, thank you. Board, are there any other questions for Mrs. Tippett? Okay, if not, we have a motion on the floor. We do have a second. If there's no more discussion, all in favor of approving the consideration or this consideration to approve the on-grade software, please signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, please let the record show that there are three 
Uh, in favor, Mr. Lewis, Ms. Ferdale, and Ms. Fisher. There are two in opposition, Mr. Lotzenheiser and Mr. Spears. The motion does carry. The next item on the agenda is the Office of Instructional Development. Consideration to approve Project Lead the Way Grant Agreement for Columbus Middle School and the consideration to approve Project Lead the Way Grant Agreement for McKellar Technology Center. If there's no opposition, board, if we could just take those two together if, if no one has any problem with that. Okay, this will require an action. Is there a motion? So moved. It has been motioned by Mr. Spears. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Lewis. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. It is unanimous. The next item on the agenda is the Office of Personnel. Consideration Madam, to approve. Madam President, um, I make a motion that we go into closed determination. All in favor of Mr. Spears' motion, please signify by raising your right hand. He, he, he made a motion to go into closed determination at this point in the meeting. Yes, okay. because we have uh, an item that needs to be discussed regarding what is coming up under uh, 9A that cannot be discussed uh, with related to personnel out in the open forum regarding job performance and um, um, other related matters to that. So your, your rationale is for job performance? That's why you, you want to strategy. I mean, if you want me to uh, craft it into something, but I mean, the whole point of going to close determination is so the board can decide whether the matter itself is fitting to go into executive session. And if it is, then we make the announcement as to what it is. But it is a personnel matter that is contained inside of 9A. Okay, you just you just alluded to um, personnel matter, and for and I just wanted to clarify that, that was what you were saying. So, Mr. Spears has a motion to go into closed determination. All in favor of his motion, please signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, please signify by raising your right hand. The motion does carry. Please let the record show that Mr. Spears, Mr. Lewis, and Mr. Lotzenheiser are in favor. Mrs. Fisher and Mrs. Ordell are in opposition. At this time, we ask for the public to please uh, step out of the room, and we will let you know uh, what item we will take up if any. Just as a matter of information, no action was taken in executive session. The next item on our agenda is the Office of Personnel. Board, we do have two items, items A and item B. Uh, if, if it is okay with the board that we take both of those at one time, or would you you'd rather do them separately? Okay. All right, so we'll, we'll entertain item A first, consideration to approve personal items. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. There's second. been a motion by Mrs. Fisher. I heard a second, but who is that from? Mr. Lewis, is there any discussion? All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Let the record show that there are four in favor and there is one opposition. Mr. Spears in opposition, Mr. Lotzenheiser, Mrs. Fisher, Mrs. Verdell, and Mr. Lewis in favor. The motion does carry. The next item is item B, rescind offer of employment made to persons to fill the HR director's position. This will require an action. Is there a motion? So moved. Has been motioned by Mrs. Fisher. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Lotzenheiser. Discussion? Yes. Uh, Mr. Spears. Madam President, I just have a, a question because um, I know I posed several questions uh, at the time that this individual, uh, which, you know, obviously this position was being uh, filled and um, regarding pay scale, regarding, you know, various things that not necessarily get into the technicals of making the decision, mm -hmm. uh, but certainly my question uh, was left, my questions were left unanswered. So I guess I come back to that same station 
now we're rescinding the offer to the individual, and I just would like to know what's going on, really. Okay, Dr. Hickman, can you provide a response, please? Her district will not let her out of her contract. Okay. okay. Because it was my understanding from what um, was stated at the meeting is that, uh, I believe it Dr. Dupree, or the individual that was the superintendent, uh, I don't know. Uh, that we were we were told that there wouldn't be any problem with this individual being let out of their contract, and so, I mean, I, I go back to, I mean, that's that's what was was stated, that if this person was approved, that uh, dialogue had already been conducted with the other district, because that was one of my questions, and no, there would not be any problem for this individual to come to our district, um, so. Okay, but, but at this time now we find that this person is not able to get out of their contract and so it still leaves the district without the position being filled. So the recommendation is that we rescind this offer so that we can try and move forward. Okay, so um, coming back to my point, in the candidate pool, I'm not getting into the hiring aspect of it, but you know, we advertise positions that's been my understanding as to how it's conducted. Mm -hmm. We advertise for the positions, candidates submit their qualifications, then they're vetted by a committee, and then we come up with a conclusion, and that recommendation is brought to the board for approval. So where exactly was this system broken down in that process? Because now we've gone through hiring an individual who can't get out of a contract, and we're still without an HR director. And we paid this person, or we're going to pay this person, when I protested it at the higher pay scale, I just, it, to me, all these facts that continue to come forward are not adding up. And I just want to understand, so, so as a board, we have to approve or disapprove of recommendations of, of, of people being put up. So I feel like I don't understand now where, where exactly are we broken down? So I guess the breakdown I mean, in the because pro because we're we're being asked to rescind this position. This is the second time right. a board has been brought a candidate for approval that now things have been rescinded. Well, I guess the breakdown in the process, Mr. Spears, would be with the candidate herself not being able to get out of her contract. Okay. All right. Excuse me. Ms. We're not Ms. being Fisher. asked to rescind the position. We're being asked to rescind the offer of Correct. employment. Right. Correct. Okay. Right. All right, is there any more discussion? Uh, we have a motion made by Mrs. Fisher. We have a second by Mr. Lotzenheiser. If there is no more discussion, all in favor of rescinding this offer of employment, please signify by raising your right hand. We have four, all opposed. Any abstentions? Okay, one abstention. Please let the record show that Mr. Lotzenheiser, Mrs. Fisher, Mrs. Verdell and Mr. Lewis is in favor and that Mr. Spears have, has abstained from the vote. It does carry. The, the position, the offer is rescinded. Next item on the agenda is for information only. Uh, board, we've had an opportunity to review the safety report. Uh, dates remembered are listed here. Uh, November 24th through the 28th, we have this, the Thanksgiving break. December 1st, we have SAT. P2 retest at Columbus High School December 3rd. We have our regular school board agenda review meeting to be held at Brandon Central Services at 11.30 a.m. And on December the 8th, 2014, we have our regularly scheduled school board meeting here at Brandon Central Services at 6 p.m. At this time, uh, we would have to entertain a motion uh, to go into closed determination. Thank you, Mr. Lotzenheiser. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. It is unanimous. We'd ask that the public please step out and someone will come out and let you know what items we will consider in executive session. In executive session, the board took three actions. They did, under potential litigation, they did retain the young law firm in Jackson to make some SEC filings for us. Um, under the minutes, they approved the executive session minutes from October the 15th, 
and then uh, there was one student matter which the board took action on. All right, thank you, Mr. Hempel. Um, at this time, it brings us to uh, we're now back in regular session, and the last item uh, for consideration tonight is that of adjournment. This does require an action. Is there a motion? A motion by Mr. Lotzenheiser. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Spears. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. It is unanimous. Meeting adjourned.